Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And I had a little hole in my um, stable of soft hammers and Amazon suggested this one. This is the Vessel number one gel grip hammer with, if you read that close, plastic head. And it's got fairly soft plastic here. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, but it actually does fit in nicely within my stable of hammers. I did a, a, um, a video on this Tecton here. Um, it's not a bad one, but apparently this may be out of production or I got an old stock and they don't make this particular one anymore with these replaceable heads. But I like plastic hammers. I like hammers in general. Um, and this one fits in nicely for several reasons. Um, by the way, Vessel makes a lot of excellent products. I've got a ton of Vessel, different, different Vessel odds and ends um, as far as, uh, you know, the Japanese or Japanese made in Taiwan style drivers. This is fast becoming one of my favorite, um, this guy here, one of my favorite ratcheting screwdrivers. And even the other day, somebody asked, does this little ball on this Vessel kind of combination stubby um, with extension, which I wish this had a bit holder on it. But anyway, they asked if there was a lock, and yes, this is the play in that lock. It's not bad. So anyway, that's a good, good solid choice. But anyway, going back to the, um, the hammers here, this vessel has fairly soft um, ends. And I'm going to show you that by using these, uh, these snap-on, these are those kind of, they, they call these, um, well, these, these are the LN47 ACFs, but they talk about this being related to a particular, like a rhinoceros beetle or something. Um, and there is a, a version of design that's called biomimicry that basically takes the designs from nature from other places or the chemical solutions or shapes or something like that and applies them in other areas. So Snap-on, you know, sometimes markets this as actually being part of, you know, the wildly powerful jaws on a particular insect, a uh, particular Coleoptera beetle. But, um, there's a little bit more to it than that. And, you know, just pointing at the beetle isn't necessarily meaning you, you mimic the actual shape of it and the purpose for the shape, but I get it. Um, however, it does lead us in tool design to start thinking about what other things could we extract from nature that would give us a uh, either a mechanical advantage or maybe a shape advantage or possibly even be able to do something uh, either we can't do or in a way we can't do it um, using something that already exists in nature and the concept would behind, you know, using something that nature has developed is you've got, you know, uh, millions to billions of years of evolution that refine that design. Um, but anyway, going back to this, uh, if you look at this, um, here is the squish. It's pretty squishy. It also holds the uh, marks pretty well too, but this smashes in nicely, which means it's fairly soft. Here's the other side. You can hear it's a little bit harder, still a little bit squishy, and it does hold the marks. Um, also on these, uh, if I slide or spin these out, you can see that this comes off. It's just screwed on. There's not really a, uh, you know, any kind of collar in here. And then here's the hammer side. This appears to be some sort of a, maybe a heavy nylon. Um, and then uh, plastic here. The gel part of this handle is pretty cool, though. Um, although you've got a soft blow, but not a dead blow, a soft blow head on this. However, this part here, if you look... Get that in there. This is way squishy. Look at that. Just smashes in. Um, it is a very grippy uh, and soft, they call it gel, handle here. Um, so, you know, you feel almost nothing transferred through here. If we compare that to a few other hammers here, um, on the PB Swiss side, we've got, if you look at this, this is USA Hickory. 
This is a fairly heavy one with a plastic head and dead blow. Dead blow is a whole different world, so we'll compare it to non-dead -dead blows. Here is an S-wing. This guy here is a 24-inch uh, heavy um, kind of rubbery material. If I throw that in to my insect jaws, um, it's got a little bit of flex, nowhere near as much as the um, as the vessel there. Flip that around, and it's also a fairly large. I mean, this is this is a bigger striking surface. It's great for that. I love this hammer. Nothing wrong with it. Highly recommend it. And its partner here. Um, this is the S-Wing uh, 12 ounce, so three quarter of a pound. Um, but this is is pretty hard plastic as I squeeze that. You know, you're not seeing a lot of deformation here. And then pretty hard. Compare that to little softer on the on the larger one and then of course this vessel um, is really soft right there snap on hard plastic on both um, a lot more expensive this is also a 24 so very similar here um, but smaller and harder plastic of course replaceable there um, these are dead blows the snap-ons that look like this there's actually stuff inside them um, and so they are a different kind of hammer. Um, there's the Tecton and of course my kind of bucket list snap-on hammer just for show right there. But anyway, uh, the thing that's kind of neat about this, not only is it high quality Japanese manufacturing on a very useful hammer, if I can get it back together, um, gel handle, flexible shaft, lightweight, size number one, uh, I'll do that later. But anyway, this thing was about 20 bucks. And 20 bucks is not that much. Of course, the S wings aren't too expensive, but there are a lot of uh, expensive soft blow hammers, PB Swiss, uh, Snap on. It's about half the price of that Tecton, but what I discovered after I made that video is a lot of people thought that was a cool hammer, but they couldn't get a hold of it because it was no longer available. And it wasn't available because it's no longer made. Um, but anyway, put that back on. There we go. So there it is. The uh, vessel size number one. Gel grip, plastic-faced, soft blow hammer. And with that, dock out.